Hey, Nick here, founder of Functional Neuro Health. I'm going to talk a little bit today about how to approach back pain from a neurostructural perspective. The way I look at the body is always the same. The body is controlled by the nervous system and the functions of the body improve when we improve the functioning of the nervous system. And pain, in particular, back pain, is no different. Personally, myself, I've been in health and fitness field for 17 years. 17 years ago, I started out as a personal trainer. And one of the very first conditions that I started to work with corrective exercise was lower back pain. 17 years ago, what we used to do was we would apply the uh, pull check approach, which is addressing inner unit core functions. So that's the muscles on the inside of the core. So that's like your multifidae, your pelvic floor, your TVA, transverse abdominis and even your diaphragm. And so what I would do with personal training clients, because I'd been trained through the Czech system way back when, which is an amazing system of therapy, I would teach my clients how to first breathe properly using their diaphragm and how to integrate breathing with any unit core activation. And nine times out of 10, that will result in an improvement in the client's back pain. So those principles still hold weight, but Over the years, of course, I've learned a lot more. I've learned a lot more about biomechanics. I've learned a lot more about brain function and how pain, and in particular chronic pain, such as chronic lower back pain, isn't always an issue with the skeletal system, although that's a system that we definitely have to have a look at. The skeletal system being the muscles, joints, fascia, ligaments, etc. So back pain for me, lower back pain, is something that's true to me because I had a previous career in the Australian Army and I developed long-term lower back and right hip pain, which is quite common. And it took around 10 years to resolve to find the right combination of therapies. Some of the more biomechanical therapies that actually helped is what I'm going to talk to you in this uh, talk here. I also had to combine it with a bit of a top-down approach. So in the system of therapy that I use in my clinic and that I teach my students and practitioners, we'll look at the body through Is it a bottom-up generated issue or is it a top-down generated issue? Often it's, it's, it's a combination. The longer you've had your symptoms, especially when it comes to something like lower back pain, the more likely there are top-down layers. What do I mean by top-down? Top-down means essentially the processing within your central nervous system in the brain itself and how that interrelates with all the other neurological pathways. We also would accompany emotions into processing as well because over time we we learn how to adapt to things and we often attach specific meanings and outcomes to our condition and that can sometimes take us longer to break out of that habitual thinking about our condition to then have full resolution but if it's a bottom-up issue a bottom-up approach which would be a movement-based approach and you could pick any movement modality yoga, Pilates, strength conditioning, CrossFit even. If it's a movement-based issue, movement will help and it will help it quite quickly. Also, manual therapy, various manual therapies. You have chiropractic, you have uh, massage therapy, you have physiotherapy, osteopathy. Any of those could also help. And if it's not shifting relatively fast, you've got to look at it from a few different angles. We're going to have a look at now the key bottom-up principles to look at if you're suffering from lower back pain. So lower back pain, as we know, statistically, it affects many, 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 many people all around the world. It's something that is routinely coming up and it's the condition I have the most experience with. And it's often a multifactorial approach that we need to apply with it. So the key principles from a structural perspective that we look at when it comes to lower back pain is what's called the COGS. So the COGS is the breakdown or the integration of your pelvis with your rib cage with your cranium, cranium being skull. In the skull itself, there are many bones that make up that one cranium. But essentially, what we're talking about when we're talking about the cogs is that the integration of those three main primary cogs in the central midline has a big effect on lower back pain, often lower back pain, is when the spine is stuck in an anterior tilt, tilting forward, which is compressing the lower spine and less 
common and less problematic, it gets stuck in a posterior till. Okay? But a lot of the times, the bottom cog, which is the pelvis, is anterior tilted. So that's the front of my pelvis is tilted towards the camera. But what that results in is if you look here, sticking the bum out and it compresses through the lower spine. So that's what's called a closed pack position, closed pack position of the lumbar spine. Now to open the spine again, we would move it, we would scoop the bum under and that then opens the space. If you have tightness through there, when you scoop what you will feel, it will feel tight. It will feel like a stretch. And guess what? That's actually normal. That's actually what you're meant to feel because you are perceiving now with your conscious mind that a tissue is tight, which is not the problem. It's just indicating to you that you are probably already stuck in this position. So when you reverse it, you're going to perceive a stretch. Hope that makes sense so far. So you have anterior to posterior. Yep. So when I tilt my pelvis forward, my spine moves back and my chin will tuck if I'm looking that way. Yeah. And if I do the other direction, tuck under, pelvis tucks under, my spine starts to round, my chin lifts. That's all normal. That's how the cogs move in a front to back, up and down, which is sagittal plane movement. That right there, getting that concept, is one of the key concepts in addressing lower back pain. So more often than not, people are stuck in this position. Now, how does it relate to breathing? As we know, breathing is probably the most important function in the human body. It's also the most important movement. Breathing couples with other types of movements. So when we breathe in, whether we're conscious of it or not, our body actually moves into what's called extension. Okay, so if you if I breathe in, breathing in is coupled with this movement of anterior tilt, body moving back, chin tuck. And then breathing out is the opposite. So tucking under, rounded shoulders, chin up. Now, if we know that we breathe 22,000 times a day, thereabouts, and most of those breaths are subconscious, and then our posture that's stuck in either this position or this position, we can have a good guess as to what type of breather you are. Do you breathe more in or do you breathe more out over your day by looking at your posture? For instance, if someone is stuck in this anterior tilt position, it's more likely they're what we call inhalation dominant or breathing in dominant. Inhalation dominance is often caused by stress activation or per perceived stress, okay? If you think about it, when you get stressed, what happens? You start to breathe in more, you start to breathe fast, you take shallower breaths in and you don't breathe out as much. In the neuroscience research, we know that breathing in activates the stress response and breathing out activates the relaxation response. So by looking at someone's posture, we can tell what state their nervous system is in and how much that's gonna then feed into unraveling this chronic lower back pain. Hope that makes sense so far. Many times over my career, I've worked with someone coming in with severe, long-term lower back pain, sciatic type symptoms, and literally all I've done is taught them how to breathe out a lot longer, breathing out then couples with this movement, and then doing what are called the cog movements, if we start out in the floor, which we'll cover in the next video, we'll do cog movements where we start to anterior and posterior tilt and get that movement going, that movement chain going to so get the joints moving, the joints act and the muscles can react off that. We do that and then we bring them into a quadruped position, hands and knees, and then we bring them into a standing position. And a lot of the times going through the different spinal positions, so we have anterior, posterior tilt, this one, what we just talked about. And we also have lateral tilting as well. Once we get this moving as well, so we open the space in the side of the body and then we get rotational movements happening as well. Nine times out of 10, that's enough to start to get the movements of the spine starting to work effectively. And then we start to look at the feet. Now, this is only if it's a bottom up driven pain issue. How will you know? These drills will work pretty fast. And not only will they work fast, if you keep doing them over time, 
you're going to move in a completely different way. Now, if you're part of the population where it's more top-down driven, where there may be emotional factors, psychological factors, or it's your sensory system in your brain has, has become hypersensitive to sound, touch, etc., we may need to work through layers there. Now, that's you'll know because you're not responding to normal therapeutic approaches or bottom-up approaches, and that's when you need to see a practitioner such as myself, which we can do work online with as well, or one of my many practitioners around the world. So if that sounds like you, book in a call for a discovery call below. If you feel like it's a bottom-up issue, then our Move Out of Pain course is the one to go to. So you, you'll find that link below, click on that, and that's where I start to go deeper into this COGS concept. But in the next video, I'll start to explore it a bit deeper, what it looks like when we do the COGS on the floor, and then in a standing position as well, and how it starts to integrate with the feet. But all in all, sometimes it's simply looking at what position are you in, Nine times out of 10 for that chronic lower back pain, you're in an anterior tilt position. Is that because you've been in a stress response over your life and you've adapted to breathing in more than breathing out? Then one of the ways we, need to, we can get you to start to feel better is literally exhaling three times longer than you inhale. Try it out. I even had, I've had a few clients where we've gotten to bend towards the floor, they get stuck there, they get the sciatic pain. We've just gotten to breathe out, long breath out, longest breath out they've ever done. And then seconds later, they're touching the floor. Have a go with that. An idea would be to just basically test how much range of motion you have before reaching the floor, and then long exhale, maybe do three, and then retest and seeing how much change in the range of motion and or pain and or tightness that you get. If that works for you, leave a comment below. If it doesn't, leave a comment below too, so we can work out why. Remember, it's either bottom up, top down, or often combination of. Here's to leveling up your wisdom about the body and mind. I look forward to seeing you next time. Make sure you like, share, and subscribe, and I will see you on the other side.